Tonight I'd like to talk about the three P's of um, WordPress site structure for SEO. Um, so um, hopefully I pitch this um, at about the, at the, the right level. Uh, my background is online marketing, so um, um, that's, that's mainly the, the angle that I'm coming from, obviously. Um, obviously there could be a big mix of people here in terms of new starts uh, to WordPress and uh, people who are um, a lot more experienced than me at uh, the development of science. Um, so the three P's, um, preparation, publishing and performance. <laughs> Um, so I'd like to begin just by giving you a little bit about my background, um, how I structure online marketing campaigns, um, where WordPress SEO really fits into the um, overall marketing mix. Um, I started off uh, making a full-time income online in 2004. Um, that's with you know, Google AdSense and things like that back then, but um, uh, I got a little bit um, <coughs> bored um, just doing things like that. Um, I really liked online marketing strategy, that's where my own particular niche was. Um, I started offering SEO services for a while and got really frustrated at the amount of companies in the marketplace that were snake oil salesmen, that were uh, offering uh, 100,000 links to your website for $99 and, and, and rubbish like that. Um, so before I was able to provide services to my clients, I was having to explain, no, that's a very bad idea to actually do that. It's, n it's just going to be detrimental to your business in the long term if you do that. But I was spending half my time, in effect, training companies. Um, so I moved on to um, kind of training. Um, and since about 2007, um, I I've been doing a lot of training. I started off with um, something I called the 13 Pillars of Internet Marketing. Um, one of the first um, seminars I did um, was on uh, YouTube, just the introduction there, you, you see, for, for quite a while it was actually up there, the first page in Google for internet marketing, if you search, um, had about 23,000 views of that one there as well. Um, but I moved the um, kind of strategy on to what I call the 26 week internet marketing plan, um, because the, the feedback I received was there's a lot of information in the 13 pillars, um, but how do you actually structure an online marketing campaign, and, and that's what I came up with. Um, so 26weekplan.com pl uh, is the brand. Um, that I'm at the moment. Um, number one Google at the moment for online marketing plan, internet marketing plan, and a, a few terms like that. Um, so that's the overall structure uh, to the 26 week plan that I call it. Um, you know, four different main phases. You know, phase one beginning with website structure, phase two talking about integrating social media um, and actually driving a lot of initial traffic at your website through things like pay per click and press releases. Phase three, um, moving on to actually broadening your base of where your traffic's coming from, not just relying on search engines, getting traffic from lots of different sites and um, other, other social media sites. And then a, a lot of content marketing, getting good at uh, providing good quality content in, in whatever media you choose to actually do your publishing in, be it um, podcasting, video, or perhaps just content on your uh, WordPress site. Um, so this, this particular focus is obviously on uh, WordPress. Um, and a lot of website structure uh, is what that encompasses. So um, hopefully my um, clicker will continue to work. It's a little bit temperamental, as always the old computer. Um, so P1, preparation. Um, let's like talk a little bit about um, competitor analysis, just uh, anal uh, analyzing other websites that are in your niche. Um, Keyword trends, related keywords, ranking difficulty, and URL structure. Um, so, it, apart from URL structure, the first four aspects don't directly uh, relate to WordPress, but I'd highly recommend focusing on these areas before publishing a site. Um, it'll give um, you a much better opportunity to actually get the site ranked well for the kind of keyword terms that you're, you're looking to target. Um, so, first of all, you want to establish who is ranking for your desired keyword phrase. Um, and just do a few searches uh, on the kind of keyword phrases that you would like to appear for. So, say your business wants freelance website designer or a freelance web designer. Um, the first um, ranking, bensky.co.uk, um, nicely optimized with um, a title, a nice meta description in there as well. Um, you can have a lot, um, a lot of detail about um, your, your competitor's sites um, through the service Alexa. Um, and um, if you drill down here, you can see it's not got a massive ranking in the UK, so potentially um, this keyword phrase is, um, is not so competitive. Um, Alexa also show you what other keyword phrases are used to find that site. So it's a, it's a great um, free uh, tool that you can use. 
Um, I also like using a tool, um, Google Insights for Search, for having a look at um, keyword phrases as well. And um, what you can do is compare different keyword phrases with this tool as well. Um, if you, if you enter freelance web designer, um, I've also put WordPress developer in there as well as a keyword phrase. And what's really interesting here um, is the keyword phrase freelance web designer is just perhaps staying fairly stagnant, going down very slightly in terms of quantity of searches over the years, and WordPress developer obviously going up really significantly. So look at data historically as well as what's happening at the moment, and it'll give you an idea of the kind of trends and what is more likely to actually rank and bring you more traffic in the future and uh, appropriate to target your site for. Uh, another good uh, tool to have a look at is the um, AdWords um, keyword tool. So just, just an, again, free tool. Um, uh, I forget the URL exactly, but it's, it's, it's easy enough to find. And uh, what you want to be doing is having a look at um, the relevance of keyword phrases, uh, or ranking them by relevance, uh, which will mean um, that Google will actually display them in an order that they think are related. Um, so you can go down and you can pick a few keyword phrases from here that are more relevant um, in the eyes of Google and probably therefore in the eyes of your, your, your visitors to your website as well. <coughs> um, now once you've done that with a lot of sites, um, you, you've done that you know, to you know, 10, 20 competitors depending on how serious you are about your business, um, then um, what I use is I use a tool, this is a paid tool actually uh, called Market Samurai. Um, and um, it tells me a lot of information um, about the ranking of my competitors. Um, so I can see things like um, the domain age, the page rank, um, how many links are pointing uh, from other domains, from other pages out there, whether or not they have the keyword in the title, in the URL, in the description. So it gives me a lot of information that I can instantly make a decision on whether or not it's actually worthwhile making an effort on attempting to write the keyword phrase. There's a lot of information there, and um, if you need to this, I don't expect you to take this in um, immediately, but um, it's worthwhile playing about with this tool if you choose to use it, because it can give you a lot of great data, and it's really useful if you build quite a few different Word, uh, WordPress sites and you're serious about them ranking highly in, your, in Google. Okay, um, on to URL structure. Um, what, what I prefer to do when I set up a website, uh, WordPress site is um, always use www. Um, I think that the majority of people who link to me naturally are more likely <coughs> to use um, that form of a website address. Um, so it, it makes sense to actually structure it like that. There are different opinions on that, but w whatever you do, make sure you actually pick um, a definitive structure uh, and you don't let both www dot and the non www dot version uh, appear in search engine results um, because that will lead to issues in Google's eyes of not knowing which URL to actually rank. Um, Google might think that um, it's actually different pages you've got there and think you might have duplicate content, um, so it would be less likely to rank you. Um, next, um, I'll move on to permalinks. Um, <coughs> The permalink structure that I like is uh, postname.html. Um, Matt Cutts said something interesting about um, uh, not stripping away extensions, and I think it probably makes sense making it look as if uh, it's an HTML page. Um, but it's, it's not a major thing. If you, if you prefer just uh, postname, that's fine. Um, but I would recommend less folders, so I wouldn't particularly uh, recommend using category in the URL structure. Um, that's an example of what that looks like. But what I also use is a plugin called SEO Slugs. Um, now, SEO Slugs um, takes out um, extra, less relevant text. So if I had a, a post heading that said things to look for in a freelance website designer, quickly, automatically, my URL would be slash freelance website designer.html. So that's less words, um, it's the more relevant words immediately. The, 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 this plugin will automatically take out very common words and it happens to take out all these words here as well. So that's a, a plugin that I'd recommend for uh, giving you nice URLs. Um, so that's um, P1, uh, preparation, just taking a look at uh, competitors. I recommend doing that to about 10 or so different competitors. You know, you'll start to gather 
keyword analysis of, of, of what they do actually, have an idea of how easy it is to write for different keywords and get your URL structure right. That's the, that's the first thing I do when I set up a WordPress site is, is get the URL structure as I mean to go on with. So moving on to P2, publishing. Um, I'd like to have a look at different uh, how, how to structure or how I structure my categories. Um, where I go hub, hub and spoke content. Um, keyword positioning, so where you'd actually place your keywords um, on each post, each page. Um, internal linking within your blog and syndication of your content. Um, so categories. Um, here's a, um, a plugin um, that I use. Um, it's called WP No Category Base. Um, I don't particularly like the URL structure or always having category or a fixed word um, to actually represent <coughs> all the categories on the blog. Um, so I just strip that out with this plugin um, and I'll just use uh, the name of whatever category I call it. So it'll be domain name.com or .co.uk, whatever, slash category name rather than slash category before it. Um, I also believe that it's very important to personalize your categories a bit more. So um, have your heading, have some introductory content before your categories. Um, so that will look something like this. I've got a podcast. Uh, which is a category. Uh, the URL is um, .com slash podcast. Um, and as you see there, I've got a little introduction there, um, a, a, an invite to actually subscribe to it, and then all your automatic posting of the content based upon where you publish your posts. So I think it's important to have that um, just introduction to your category. Um, now, um, I'd like to talk about high quality hub content um, and, and spoke content. Hub content um, is what I call major content <coughs> on your site, like my podcast category or like different pages. If you've got a really important piece of content, um, I'd probably recommend publishing it as a page um, and updating that page uh, on an ongoing basis and not having comments on that page. Um, and then uh, posting uh, posts on a regular basis whenever you want to update that, informing people you've just updated this piece of content, here's a link to it, so you're constantly linking to it, um, and you're getting comments on your individual posts, but your actual page, you're not potentially losing Google juice as it were by having lots of comments on your core page, your core hub content. And so what I do is I automatically link to my hub content um, by, um, if I actually just um, go over the structure to begin with actually, so I'd like to talk about the heading, body content, title and meta description and um, where I position keywords, um, so we'll just get to the, um, the, the hub and spoke content in a little bit there. Um, here's an example of an individual post, um, this is the heading, so uh, one of the keyword phrases I'm aiming for is online reputation management, um, so I've got this in the heading but it's not that's important to have it in the front of the heading. Um, write a heading that appeals to users. Um, however, it's more important to have your keyword phrase towards the front of your title tag. Um, so what I'll do is I'll write a slightly different title tag that's shorter, um, that's uh, less than 66 characters. Um, and I also have a meta description that has a nice call to action um, that includes the keyword phrase. Um, now, the meta description, of course, appears uh, underneath the title and search engine results um, and doesn't have a direct impact on search engine optimization if you include the keyword phrase there. However, um, what it does do is significantly improve your conversion rates and if uh, your click-throughs from the Google results are much better than other competitors, Google will naturally want to rank you higher because it looks like it's more relevant for users who are searching for that particular keyword term. So um, it's worthwhile, it takes a bit of effort, but it's worthwhile having a unique meta description for each post, each page that you actually publish as well. Um, a couple of internal linking plugins. Um, one I use is called Yet Another Related Post plugin, and second one, SEO Smart Links plugin. Um, now, the yet another related posts plugin, it's, just, it's called YARP um, in the, um, the plugin directory in WordPress, um, displays the five most relevant posts um, according to things like which keyword phrases are used in titles, um, the content. The plugin's fairly intelligent and will be fairly decent at, at bringing up related co uh, posts. Uh, that'll be great from a, a search engine crawling perspective because 
you'll get search engines um, finding your post, you know, after it pings to different places and you publish it for the first time, but they'll crawl through it and they'll, they'll crawl through the rest of your site and they'll, they might increase the ranking of more historical pages because you've included that plugin there as well. So it'll really help uh, your users and search, and, uh, search engines as well. So um, I highly recommend that plugin. Another plugin um, that I use here is the SEO Smart Links plugin. Um, I think this is a paid for version I use. They've got a, a free version as well. And um, I have an awful lot of data uh, in the field down here. It goes down an awful uh, lot further. And what this does is whichever keyword phrases I'm targeting um, on my individual posts and pages, um, uh, if I keyword phrase, comma, keyword phrase, um, pipe, and then the URL, what that does is whenever that keyword phrase is mentioned anywhere on the site, it'll automatically become a link and link back to that particular post or page or whichever URL it is. Um, so that provides really nice natural insight in content linking. Um, and uh, syndication. Um, what um, I use is an XML sitemap, um, uh, and it's useful to have a look at Google website, uh, Google Webmaster Tools. Um, it's important to submit your RSS feed and your blog to different uh, blog and RSS directories, and um, possibly interact in different communities as well. Um, so sitemap, um, XML sitemap is a plugin that I use. Um, it probably more than anything helps you. Uh, determine whether or not there are issues uh, on your site. If there's um, content um, that's not being ranked, it's not being crawled properly, uh, it'll pick up URLs uh, that display 404s. Um, so uh, it, it's useful to have an XML sitemap. It also gives you the opportunities to, to tell Google uh, which pages on your site are more important to crawl through and rank. So it can give you a, a, a measurement tool. It lets you rank uh, pages from a 10 rating to a 1 rating and you're not making it more likely <coughs> for your site uh, to be completely crawled but what you are doing is help, helping Google go through your site so if you don't want them to rank for instance your about us page, your contact page, different terms pages you know you'll, you'll rank that very low and Google will be less likely to rank those pages and crawl through those pages. Um, Google Webmaster Tools useful you can uh, submit your sitemap um, to that and it will tell you when there are different errors um, that's a few examples there as well. You know, I've got some URLs there that I haven't picked up on yet. Um, that um, uh, there are issues. Probably, uh, I might have changed the URL actually, and it's still picking up the old ones. So I need to look at perhaps 301ing the old one to the new one. But it gives me an indication that there's a, a potential um, issue that I need to look at. Blog and RSS directories. Um, if you just search Google for submit uh, blog RSS. Um, this uh, top ranked blog.com has got a nice list of uh, around about 200 different blog and RSS directories. Um, I always like using FeedBurner um, as my RSS feed. Um, so I like what they call burning my RSS feed to actually give me data on who's subscribing uh, to the feed. Um, so you might want to do that uh, or at least look into that. So submit your feed URL to all these directories and what that will do is when you actually publish new content um, your feed will update and your feed will update on all these different directories out there and automatically syndicate your content or at least get your titles out there and a link to your site. Um, so that will certainly help your search engine optimization. Um, iTunes, um, that in effect is a blog directory. You know, I submit my uh, XML for my RSS feed um, for my podcast category to iTunes and it updates every single time that I publish a new, uh, new episode. So, so that in effect is a blog directory. Um, blogging communities, um, there's something called Blog Catalog that's a good idea to look at and there you can actually find blogs that are very, very relevant uh, to your particular subject that you concentrate on. Um, so the key, or one of the keys to, to modern SEO is uh, interacting in social media and people talking about your blog. Uh, and they're more likely to do that, of course, if you interact in other blogs um, about your topic, um, provide great, relevant, um, informative responses to their particular posts. Um, you'll get people who come to your blog because of the comments that you make in other blogs, and you'll build more of a following yourself as well. Um, another uh, plugin that I use is Comment Love, um, and what that does uh, is it actually lets users um, 
with an RSS feed that's associated with their domain, so probably with a blog, um, automatically leave links to their latest articles um, at the bottom of each comment. Um, that'll provide an incentive uh, for them to comment. Um, I think now it's um, no follow actually, I think it used to be do follow, but it's still a decent incentive because it provides links to their content. Uh, and so that's P2 publishing. Um, had a quick look at um, categories. Uh, hub and spoke content, you know, that's basically <coughs> your core content, which are your 10 most important uh, pages or 20 most important pages or categories in your site, and focus on that. Really research keyword phrases for your core pages, your, your hub pages, and, and keep on developing them. Add little bits of new content to them and uh, let your subscribers know by um, adding new posts to say that you've just updated this. Keyword positioning, you know, uh, get in your title, your um, the heading, uh, you, once in your content as well, um, and then your, your, in, your interlinking as well. Um, and uh, the syndication, uh, blog directories, um, make sure you've got your um, XML sitemap as well. Brings on to P3, performance. Um, so just like to talk a little bit about test and refine, increase speed on your blog. Um, how to direct search engines through your site and a little bit about conversion optimization again going away from WordPress but really online marketing as a whole you know impacts your business even if you're just um, uh, focusing on WordPress you know you should uh, be aware of the general online marketing mix um, so first of all Google Analytics you know hope Hopefully if you've had a blog for a while, you've at least got Google Analytics um, installed in your blog or some kind of tracking that tells you um, what's happening with the visitors when they land on your site, where they're coming from. Um, so through Google Analytics, you can see which keyword phrases um, are being used to find your site. Uh, but you can also see you know, wh how many pages people view, uh, how long they're on, on your site after visiting through certain keyword phrases. And if you set up goals through analytics, um, you can set up financial goals like um, if they fill in a form, then it's perhaps worth, you can put a, a value of five pounds or something like that in there. So you get a lot more reporting from Google Analytics um, if you put a goal um, on what's called a funnel um, to actually set up a, a particular target. Um, but Google Analytics get that um, code installed to begin with. Again, going back to Market Samurai, um, you can get a lot of information um, using this tool as to what your current ranking is for different keyword phrases. Um, and this tool will, will quickly <coughs> go through hundreds of different URLs um, on Google and different search engines out there and tell you precisely where you are ranking um, for those keyword terms. So then you know, you know, if you're not ranking, <coughs> ranking that high or if you're nearly at number one, then it's worthwhile doing more um, linking work um, to actually get yourself higher uh, in search engines for your keyword term. Um, I can't remember the exact figure, but it's something like 90% more traffic that you get compared with 10th uh, in the first page of Google rankings to number one um, on the first page. So it's really worth it. Even going up from like third uh, to second, you know, second to first, makes a big difference in the volume of traffic that you actually get. So um, it's worthwhile looking into that. Site speed. Um, I find this tool quite useful. Just enter your URL. It'll tell you roughly on average um, how long your site takes to load. Um, ideally, it's not going to be more than about five seconds or so. Uh, I think the average is about seven seconds. Um, so if it is a little bit <coughs> slow, uh, you can look at a few different ways to speed it up. Um, uh, I've used these two plugins here. Um, I find them fairly good. Um, uh, W3 Total Cache plugin, Optimize DB plugins. Um, uh, you know, some people here will know um, more than me about precisely how they work, but I just know that they speed up the blog. Uh, which, so it's worthwhile, it's, it's fairly easy to actually um, um, install, and um, um, if you've got issues with um, site speed, those are the couple of areas that um, are probably the good initial areas to, to start. A good host um, is important as well. You know, I've tried you know, probably about 10 different hosts. Um, those are four here, uh, shared hosts that I've found fairly fairly effective. Um, Postgator and HostMonster provide a host and West host. Um, VPS.net has had some good reviews. Um, if you're moving up and um, you want a solution for a blog that's going to get you know thousands of visitors a day. 
and direct search engines. So what I mean by that is actually tell search engines where to go on your site. Um, now if you've got a decent theme, then it's not going to be too much of an issue. You know, going back, you know, four or five years ago, um, it was much more important to to ensure that everything that was going on in your theme, you know, was great for search engines. But um, I mean, I've used Thesis for a couple of years, but there are, there are loads of other themes out there that do a great job of doing things like um, not indexing archives. Um, so if you've, you, if you've got lots of different duplicate content, or what appears to be like duplicate content, um, if you, you've got categories, you've got archives, you want search engines to be crawling and ranking your categories and not your, your archives. Um, so any uh, pages um, that are produced uh, which look very similar just focus on ranking one of them uh, and pushing all the link, uh, link juice to, towards um, one of them. Um, a 301 redirect uh, for unwanted yet uh, ranked old posts is quite useful as well. So if you've got a post that just isn't relevant now because of the subject matter that you talk um, uh, about that might have been date sensitive and not relevant now, but it might be still ranking in Google, instead of deleting that post, um, then 301 forward it to a more relevant post still talking about the same sub subject matter um, and then you're increasing um, the ranking of that new post a lot more. Um, so, and conversion optimization. Uh, that's actually a WordPress site that I've got, 13pillars.com. Um, I know it doesn't particularly look like one or it looks horrible to a lot of um, uh, WordPress uh, designers, uh, but um, using that um, design as it were, um, I get about 37% opt-in. Um, so 30% of people that view that page will opt in with their email address, um, download that book, they're opted into my database. You know, I've got thousands of people who are opted into my email list as it were. And you know, from a marketing perspective, I, think, I still think it's very important to be building an email list. Um, uh, and you know, it's important to use those principles um, on your WordPress site as well. Um, uh, Google uh, Website Optimizer is a great tool. Um, they'll, they'll let you split test things, do A-B split tests, do multivariable tests, and uh, what's more likely to convert, um, to actually um, achieve your goals that you're looking for um, with your particular site. Um, so that's um, P3, uh, performance, um, test refine, uh, increased speed, direct search engines, and then conversion optimization. Um, so that is the three P's of WordPress site structure. I've you know, talked maybe pretty quick there and um, perhaps not been that in depth about different things, but um, hopefully that's been um, um, okay. Um, has anyone got any um, kind of questions at all? Hi. Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of questions, but I'll take the first one. Um, when you've got a, um, you mentioned about the total cash plugins and optimized DB plugins. Are you proposing to use both of them together, or are they kind of do the same thing? <coughs> I, I, I don't, um, as far as I'm aware, they do um, slightly different things because I've had um, issues with um, a, a site loading slowly, and um, I was actually on the support from a web host, and the web host recommended the Optimize DB plugin, right. and that's when I was using the W3 cache plugin already. Okay. Um, so I have got both plugins up and running. Right, so they don't. Like potentially clash or um, anything like that. Not as, as far as you know. Exactly. Yes. yes. Okay. Could I get you another quick sure. um, If you've got a site that's got quite a deep hierarchy, yeah. Sort of like um, you mentioned about the URLs, the permalink structure, and everything like that. Mm. Obviously, if it's an existing site, you don't want to go mad mm. and change it exactly. Yeah. But if you're, if we're working towards another site <coughs> that's going to have a quite a deep hierarchy, mm -hmm. are you still like um, you're still recommending literally just you know like um, for post name. Name. Yes, yeah. um, I, I am. Um, I, I think the more folders that you have, um, the less likely it is that Google will uh, think that it's um, likely to be authoritative for right. content. Yeah. And um, by linking to other relevant posts, um, you, you, you're just as likely to tell Google that it's um, you know, about this particular topic. Sure. Okay. Hi. That's uh, have you got anything to say about the latest Google Analytics um, algorithm update? Because I think it's quite interesting. Are you talking about Panda, basically, yeah? Um, uh, is it called Panda? I thought it was rec recency. Yeah. If it's, I don't know if it's called... I mean, good, good, good. yes, uh, there's a um, more recent one, sorry. Um, it, it, it's all about... Uh, I mean, Google are moving towards more... Um, 
what people do. Um, so, you know, what people's habits are. If, if they go um, through the Google uh, results and click on cer uh, certain sites, um, how, how long do they stay on that site for before they, they, they press the back button? How many pages did they uh, view on that site? Um, uh, what's, you know, obviously the social media uh, impact uh, of that particular page as well. Um, they know that um, people can um, do things to um, on-site SEO and backlinks. Um, so they're looking for, for more authority, uh, for, for, for links from places of authority, links in in content and exceptionally unique content as well. You know, I would, I would certainly recommend always having as much unique, great content on your site. So starting off with uh, a new site, you have 20 pages of, of completely unique, decent content that's structured in a manner that's telling Google what the site's about um, to get your uh, site crawled to begin with. Um, um, so yeah, uh, that's just a thought. Question. Um, obviously, there's quite a lot of time involved in all the steps you've, you've uh, said there. It's all a bit sort of setup time, you know, with competitor analysis and so on, and it's all a bit ongoing work that you need to do. Yes. Um, if you had limited time, what would be your, you know, your what would be your sort of core uh, jobs that uh, you would recommend? Um, d decide and hopefully research on one keyword phrase, um, and then. Naturally, um, you will talk about that particular subject matter and end up talking about key with keyword phrases that that, that relate to that. Um, I would certainly, um, if it's a new site, um, get the URL structure in that, in that particular format um, and then decide on one core method um, of, of, of what you're good at and what type of content production you're good at or, or really like doing. Um, I probably like podcasting more than anything. Um, so what I actually do is um, I record a podcast. Um, I use a service um, the, called Scribe.com. Um, uh, I think they're Indian based and they um, transcribe my podcast. Um, it's only uh, about a dollar um, a minute, an audio minute that I pay them. Um, but it's really good quality to come up with. Um, and I've got about um, 12 to 16 different pages of content from a 30 minute um, discussion. So that's the way that I produce content, uh, which is time efficient and um, uh, publish it, and it's, it's nice for search engines as well as users. Hi. Um, yeah, my name's Andy Rawls. I, I wanted to ask you, what, given that there's a, a sort of movement towards people using mobile devices and social networking and following links from recommendations from friends and all that, that sort of different way of discovering new content. What do you think will replace keywords, phrases and search engines? What, what do you think will be the, the, the new way of orientating your marketing so that you can get traffic that isn't coming any, any longer from Google searches? I mean, it's, it's, in terms of site structure, um, it'll stay with keyword phrases, um, but um, it, it incorporate, we're, we're using them on your post content, you know, uh, having keyword phrases in your titles, in your content. Um, they're only relevant if people are using searches. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But, but moving on from there, aren't using searches. But when you produce great quality content, yeah. that's 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 encouraging social interaction. There, there, there's a lot of um, sites out there which you know, are made of spun articles. Um, it's you know a certain percentage unique, um, and it's not not offering users any significant value. Uh, so if you do produce fantastic quality <laughs> unique content, um, it's positioning you certainly in the top 10% of websites out there. Um, and then you can initiate uh, the sharing uh, by you know, having your own Twitter, having your own Facebook page. Um, you know, I have my uh, facebook.com slash brand name, I have my brand name for my Twitter that I, that, that I use a bit. Yeah, I probably prefer a uh, Facebook page more than Twitter. Um, I use um, automatic posting of my content onto my Twitter feed as well. Um, so the, the information naturally gets out there into social media and once a few people pick it up, uh, if it's great content, um, you get lucky sometimes and it'll um, 
go all over the place and sometimes you won't. I've also used um, stumble upon advertising as well, uh, quite effectively. <coughs> stumble ponds are, are really quite a cheap way to advertise still. Um, you can pay just five cents um, per stumble and that will drive a lot of initial traffic. That's what I did with a YouTube video recently actually. Um, I put a video up on uh, YouTube recently about two months ago. Um, I, I spent something like a hundred dollars driving traffic at it um, from StumbleUpon. I probably got about 500 news, views initially. Um, I then you know, told my list um, about it. You know, that's another reason why uh, building an email list is very good because you can tell people, you know, um, apart from them subscribing via RSS feeds that you've published new content. Um, uh, so I can say things like, look, I've just published this, will you do me a good favor and um, add a comment on YouTube? And then that, uh, in YouTube's algorithm will naturally make your video rank higher on YouTube. So that, that video has had over 3,000 views now in two months. And for a, a fairly dry subject, as it were, like uh, an online marketing seminar, that, that's, that's, that's fairly good. Um, that, that hasn't dropped off at all, the, the, the trend's staying. If you search Google for internet marketing, uh, that Google is number two uh, on YouTube at the moment. Okay. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> kind of follows on from that, really. Um, so that's on YouTube rather than on, on your, your site itself, if you like. Uh, the thing that, so I do a lot of, a lot of training and mm -hmm. I've got um, a lot of my presentations on SlideShare. And actually um, uh, that's kind of, uh, that's the main place that people uh, sort of look for my stuff as it were. Does that dilute though my, my, my SEO in the sense that my stuff is over here on my site and here on my on, on my SlideShare side, potentially on YouTube. Mm. Is there a way of, if you like, linking those together to make sure that um, those people who are coming in to your, to your YouTube are then following down the path that you would want them to go after? Yeah, I, I mean, it's really important yeah. you know, to, to, if possible, have a call to action at the end of your video, mm -hmm. um, to ideally have something you know, a little bit different and free to give them, saying if you go back to this website address, you can um, get this free ebook as well, which is sure. related to the content. Also, if you publish on YouTube, if you include your URL as the first item in the description, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube will turn that into a live link. Um, okay. at the bottom of your video, so people will click through from that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and when they click through, you can click through to the same page if you want. Yeah. Um, and if you're embedding the video on your uh, page, then you'd probably have 400 words of um, you, you, more unique content mm -hmm. in relation to the video that would sure. make Google demonstrate it was, it was different slightly. Mm -hmm. okay. Just a quick one over here. Uh, well, two things actually. First of all, Keith, I need to get ready for the sure. next talk. But also, on here, just a brief question about um, so you've invested all this time in actually creating some content that people actually want to read. Uh, what, what advice would you give to people who um, what, uh, to, to, to actually stop that content being essentially put on the content farms elsewhere? Or have you actually had to deal with that any of that for yourself? Yes, definitely. Um, and um, I would simply say that. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, I'd simply say that um, get known um, to Google as the website that produces uh, the website first. So that's another reason to get crawled first. Um, if you're crawled first, then uh, and you're thought of as an authority site in your niche, Google will, will naturally know that you are the originator of the content. And um, Google wants rank as much duplicate content now as they used to uh, and because you're the original producer and you're the authority uh, they, they'll, they'll be very unlikely to actually um, rank competitors that just display exactly the same content. Brilliant, well thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. David, will you be making your slides uh, available? Um, yes, uh, I'll tell you what I'll um, give them to Keith and he, he can um, like, publish them somewhere. Thank you. Yeah.